All right. All right, we on? It's the Cares None Be Dope Podcast. I am your host, Chris Cares None. And Hello, I'm with my, Chris. I'm with my co-host, hey. Matt, Matt Michael Jack. Good job. Even after a month, you still remember. <laughs> How you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. Happy to be here. It's been a while. It has been a little while. It's been uh, quite a while, man. Uh, At least four weeks, five weeks, six five. weeks. I don't know. It's been a it's been a hot minute. We were supposed to be here last week, but yeah, life, man. Fucking get it. Uh, so actually, there's something I've been going through. Yeah. So and, tell uh, me about that. And uh, it's going to sound worse than it is. Uh oh. And uh, but it's been something on my mind, and I got to get it out. And I probably won't harp on it after this podcast, unless it's brought up for whatever reason. But. I was uh, I was diagnosed with CLL. I don't know what that is. It's uh, chronic lympho- lymphonic leukemia. Huh. And uh, that's a type of cancer. What? The good news, <laughs> if there could be good news, it's like one of the most common cancers. It's the one there's a ton of help. There's mad treatments for it. And as a matter of fact, the doctor, the specialist, on- oncology, oncologist, oncologist, yeah. he, he was like, "There's, we don't. I actually suggest no treatment." Hmm. He goes, "It's a slow move. The chronic is. It's a slow moving f- disorder of my blood for some reason, and it's odd because I, it, I felt like I. So what? Ha- how I noticed it? So here, let's go. Let's backtrack. Yeah, please. So I went to. Uh, how there, recent was this diagnosis? 12 hours ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but let me, let me go back. So remember I went to, when I found out my liver enzymes were high. Yeah. And I stopped drinking. Right. Um, Which goes back, what, that's almost two months? That's four months. Four months, no drinking? Yeah. Going on four months, I haven't drank. Almost five, I think. Or right around four or five. Oh, something. yeah, because I guess I'm about the same for smoking. We were, right, we're it's right about that. At the same time, yeah. And um, so I went. And I got blood work done because, you know, it's the first time I had blood work done since I was like a kid. Mm -hmm. Had insurance. I guess you get a free blood work every year whatever. Free, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Physical. Physical. So I finally hit it. And uh, blood in my white blood cells came back high. Everything else was good, though. But it was alarming, and especially because I had some enlarged lymph nodes. And they're still enlarged. And I'm like, okay, what the hell is this? And. And the doctor was like, okay, that's alarming because if you add the lymph nodes plus this, it, it, it's something, and, and it tends to be leukemia, lymphoma related. Hmm. And I'm like, oh, no. My so you knew about this probability or possibility? Uh, three weeks ago. Two, okay. Two and a half, three weeks ago. That was when you got the blood work done? No. So that, so I went back. Okay, so I went back again. Because I was supposed to go back to get an ultrasound for for the liver enzymes. Okay. And uh, they were like, uh, "This is alarming." So let's talk about it. And when I came, I went. I went back three months later because I I knew I wasn't gonna go back until I stopped drinking to improve my liver. Gotcha, gotcha. That was gotcha. what my whole thought was. Right. They wanted me to come back that week, and I'm like, "No, nope, I'm gonna come back." And I'm because <laughs> I just know it's probably my fucking drinking. Right. And I'm going hard. And so the good news is, let me flush my system out. Good news is, clean the system up. The thistle, the dandelion root. Yeah. So anyone who's dealing with the uh, uh, liver enzymes, I know for a fact, if you, and if you drink, it could be other reasons, but if you're a drinker and you have these issues, stop drinking and then take the, and you I mean you talked about yeah, the milk, milk thistle. thistle and dandelion root was another one I've been taking. And uh, liver's perfectly back, 100%. Awesome. So that's awesome. Um, so anyway, so I went back when I was finally ready. Did I'm the like, liver have anything to do with the other stuff? I don't know. With the white blood cells and the... No, I don't think so. Okay, that was just a separate. That was a separate thing. <laughs> just from drinking like yeah, a fish. Yeah, drinking like a fish. <laughs> so I go in there, and uh, this is where we at. We're in So we go in there, and uh, so I went back three months later, or whatever, because I'm like, I should be good now. I've been killing it. He goes, Yeah, your shit's pretty good. You know, you you're crushing. Whatever you're doing, that's dope. He goes, But the lymph nodes is a little concerning. So we did uh, a CT scan of abdomen, pelvis, and then I did another one of my neck. Where the, where most of the lymph nodes. And do you are. feel that? Like yes. Is it just like what? How do? You, how, what does it feel like? Just a tightness, almost like you pulled the muscle. It's or? almost like that a little bit, like a very very light 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 version of that. Mm-hmm. But uh, you, more so, you just feel, you just feel them. Gotcha. You, know, you can just if you just feel like you, you know we all have yeah, lymph yeah, nodes. Yeah. Mine are just enlarged, right? And sometimes they get swollen even when you get like a cold, a bad yeah, cold yeah. infection or something. 
but being unaware, uneducated on the situation, I'm thinking, what the fuck is this weird girl? You know what I'm saying? I, I just didn't know because I'm not educated on it. Right. So I go in there and he goes, okay, well, we're going to send you to the, there's another one. Not the oncologist, but another one starts with an O. He's the, the head and neck specialist. Okay. So I go to him and he goes, okay. He goes, well, this is what I think. It could be COVID related. Because that's when I noticed all this shit popping off when mm-hmm. I was in my bed, fucking not dying, but not feeling great because of COVID. And I just felt like my shit was, and it, it might not be this, but that's just the week that I noticed. Right. He goes, and uh, f- based on what I can tell and the blood work that I've done, to this is the first specialist, I don't think it's nothing crazy. He goes, uh, but we need to do a biopsy of one of the lip nodes. We're going to cut one out, a small guy. He goes, it's a 15-minute thing. You know, you can drive here, drive home. It's a little guy, you know, local anesthesia. And, and you can do either local, you can do the the half local, half for real, or you can do the for real and be put out. And I was like, well, you know, what's your suggestion? He goes, uh, if you ask me, just do the local. Like, it'll be 15 minutes, you're out. So I'm like, all right, set me up with that. But before, and that was for the next following Monday. Okay. But the, my general practitioner had set me up for the oncologist. The day at, you know, like later that week. So I went to go see him. And so you I, saw him the, in between the the limb, yes. no, the biopsy. Yes. Okay. And he uh, and he was like, well, and, and I first of all, I love this doctor. He was awesome. Just made me feel good. He goes, well, based on what I'm seeing, uh, we're gonna have to. He goes, and I'm like, I told him like, hey, I I got this biopsy. They got to remove. He goes, before we do that, let's. I think I might know what's going on. He was like I'm not, you know. Before we cut you open, that's what he said. Before we go to, let, let's figure it. Let's do this, you know. And he, this is what he does, right? He deals with blood and shit. Isn't that what they do? Oncologists? Yeah. I don't know. Just blood. I mean, I, I just cancer things. Cancer specialists. Can- cancer yeah. specialists, right? So he goes, uh, well, so here's the thing. So he showed me my, and I've I've had mad blood work done. So <laughs> you're becoming an expert on yeah, reading blood like, charts, or I just know that they've been reading it, so uh, they would have found whatever, and they they did. And he goes, uh, so here's your white blood count. And this is what obviously is alarming people. But that's not the scary part. So I'm like, okay, that's a good thing to hear. <laughs> but what is the scary he part? He goes, doc? now, and I guess there's, and I don't, I'm not a doctor, but from what he was telling me, that there's different types of white blood cells. And he's like, if it was this one and this one, and he goes, then we'd have a real problem. He goes, that would be some serious shit that we have to get on right now. Yours, as you can see, are in the perfect, you're good. Yours is this one. And he said, it's not, he goes, it's, it's, it's one of the things, if I believe what it is, because I've seen this before, da, 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 I'm a specialist. It's one of the things that it's, it's, it's unfortunate, but it's like the one that's like, if you're going to get something fucked up, this is the one to get. <laughs> that does, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's the one that like people it's live like a on. a backhanded compliment of. Yeah, you know, of, of diseases. <laughs> right, right. So he goes, uh. Now, mind you, this whole time I'm freaking out because I don't know what the fuck it is. <laughs> right. I, literally, I you hear you you hear words like leukemia and lymphoma and cancer. You, I'm I'm pretty much in the grave. Right. You know what I'm saying? I've I've kind of I've kept it. I didn't even know if I was going to say it on this pod. I didn't know if you know. I, I've been going through a lot, but you anyways, said CLL. What was it again? Chronic, chronic lymphomic, chronic lymphomic leukemia. Chronic lymphomic leukemia. So just a, it's a, it, but it's extremely slow. So anyway, so the doctor goes, uh, here's what I think, man. He goes, I think that you have this, but my recommendation for treatment is nothing. He goes, and, and, and I was like, okay. Well, I, again, I, I'm sitting here startled. <laughs> Steve comes with me, but they're not allowing anyone else extra in there, and I get it because of COVID, so he's on the phone, speakerphone. You know, he's like my brother. Whatever. Right. So he's on the phone uh, listening to it, and um, – so that the doctor was like, said, yeah, so we'll go through there. So before you go get that, let's find out what we can figure out from this. And then if we can't figure out, then we'll do the biopsy. So I'm like, all right. But then I, so I left that talk kind of, you know, feeling better that he was pretty confident, scientifically confident. Sure. That, because, and I asked him point blank, I said, doc, am, like, am I dying? Am I, you know, am I going to live a life? Like, I need to know that because, you know, and he was like, absolutely. So that was a great thing. Right. And then, so then I'm like, all right, but that's still, it's still in your mind, you know, oh, and, until you have an official. And even if it's official, it's still something that's on you. It's know, still it's, something it's you're still you're dealing you're, with. Right. 
So I'm like, all right, so whatever. I'm trying to live normal life, trying. In it, but, it's it, again, it's, it's in the back of your mind. But then I'm waiting on this phone call. You know, I'm waiting on it. And he's like, well, it takes a few days because he's got to go to here and they got to whatever. So I got the call this morning. And he was like, so I actually got a call last night and missed it. But I couldn't. I called him in back 10 minutes. He was gone. Got the call today. He goes, yep, yeah, so it's what I thought it was. You have L- L- a CLL and, uh, and same thing we, we already know about it. He goes, uh if you want to read some more research on it, but he goes, he goes, here's the positives for this situation. One, the treatments that we're using today to treat this, which we can, if it becomes a issue, we can, we got things to do right now. The very good ones. So, which is a good thing to hear. Mm-hmm. That's a great thing to hear. So I know ultimately if it gets worse or whatever, I know that I have some options. It ain't like I'm just fucked, you know, but he goes, the shit that we were using that we're using now we didn't have three years ago he goes the technology for this thing is constantly it's constantly advancing evolving. advancing vicious he goes so in three four years ten years even a year from now like it's, it's going to be better so what's the approach right now is it just approach monitor is, it yep, or just every like three months so every I, three I, months i got a, i got an appointment in three months and do blood and we'll just go from there or if i feel something that's too weird go in there and we'll go from there um, I'm a little weird because my neck is, and I think it's because it's there. It's just an obstruction of what you're used to, so it feels different. Sure. So I don't, I can't tell if it's, if it's just in my head because it's like, because because I was like, hey, do I? What do you do with them? Are they gonna go down? He goes, well, no. It's once they've enlarged, they're enlarged in this situation. So I mean, we can cut them, and we can do that. But I mean, I don't suggest that unless it's either bothering you, a, or it's too like if it's like you know one on your forehead, you know, and it's, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, right? So, uh, so that's what uh, he goes, yeah. So, and those are the questions I asked. And me and Steve are gonna call him tomorrow because he wasn't able to get on the call. But listen, I'll I'll tell you this: it was definitely a scary last couple weeks. But now knowing that, it, so the word cancer is not equal. You know, you hear that word. So I know I, when I first heard that word, it's the scariest thing ever. Right. You're like, You're oh, probably no. just repeating that yeah. word in your head. Just, just like, and, what and, the and fuck? You tell somebody that and they go, whoa, you know. But it's like, I don't want to discredit the people who have, like, lung cancer or the people who have, you know, fucking colon cancer. Because that shit, that's going to get you now if you don't, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I have the one that's extremely slow moving. It's very common. And they got things to do a good job with it. Um, if I'm not, I could be wrong in this, but when I was, and I don't like to, do you like to go on Google and read shit? I feel like that's the worst thing you can do is Google. I, I don't like to, but I do it all the time. And then I that, feel that worse vicious. about my yeah. situation. <laughs> you, you can, I've vicious. never felt better after checking symptoms no. on Google or self diagnosing myself. Yeah, self diagnosing is, is brutal. Right. Um, but once you know exactly, it's a little easier. And he gave me th- some specific sites to go to that has good and it was Mayo Clinic. It was like that's the good one he suggested. Mm-hmm. And from what I is read, your doctor around here? Yeah, right down the street. Oh, nice. Uh, and they're quick. They were fast. They were on it, man. It was just, it was super dope. They've been super nice. Um, but yeah, man, that's uh, what I've been going through. So it's been a hell of a couple <laughs> of weeks, right? Ah, yeah, man, shit. And then wait, and then uh, there's more. You know. Some I'm not gonna put it out and put put the person out there, but someone else you know that I love dearly is going through some. It could possibly be breast cancer, and um, uh. and some are very 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 close to me. So, but it might not be. You know, they're getting you know checked up, and we'll, so we're going through this together. And uh, well, thinking about you, man. Oh, hey, listen, Shit. man. But I tell you one thing, man. I once once I knew. It's it's easier to like exist, you know. The, the yes, not knowing, knowing, is, knowing, right? It's awful. I would imagine. And I probably what I should do is talk to someone who's dealt with it just to get a little, you know. But my therapy is what we're doing now. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm I don't want no sympathy from all that, you know, because it's not that, you know. I don't go fund me like that's not what I, you know. What I'm saying no because I, some people right. might hear sure, this and sure. think it's way, but it's not that. Yeah, I gotcha. So I want to make sure anyone who's listening who's like, oh shit, it's not that. Every the three specialists that I saw all said that I'm going to live a long life. Good, well, as long as you don't drink and get behind the wheel of a car. And oh do yeah, stupid, or do something jump stupid. Off a bridge. Yeah. Or like it won't be this won't be the reason. You right. Know, like so, and then like I said, once I go, if I just go in every three months, and then we'll be able to catch us. So that's another lesson to learn in this situation is if. You, Go get your check. You feel something, right? And we've talked about that before on the podcast with some of your other 
issues, <laughs> various ailments. And, and that's a lesson learned. And, and I still feel like I've caught all this shit in a relatively, you know, quick, young. I'm still young. I'm yeah. 36. That's young. You know what I'm saying? And anything in your 30s is young. So, and, and I'm still relatively healthy. And, and the cool thing, and Steve brought this up, and it was a little, I didn't even think about this. When you do a CT scan, they see everything. Like, so if you have some other shit, you're going to see that too. Right. And they're they going to break down what they see. They're going to tell you what it is. Which one's the CT scan? Is That's that the one, one? The big machine, the round machine. Like in the donut? Through, yep. Okay. In the donut. And uh, super quick, and they put this fucking shit inside of you so they can see. It's super It's like weird. a dye or something, right? Well, there was two. There was one, there was like a dye, and there was another that was something else, but it's supposed to help see, so you can see the shit. And uh, it's kind of weird. Usually, like, it lasts like literally three minutes. Doesn't it like make you feel cold or something? Like warm. You, warm, that's it makes right. makes you feel warm, and then they, they kept saying, you know, it's going to feel like you're going to pee, got to pee, but you don't. That's just the way you feel. And it does. I'm like, oh, shit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it feels a little tickle. Uh, yeah, it's like a little weird tickle, but. Uh, squeeze, squeeze. So when he was like, yeah, I mean, because what if you had something else that you didn't know about that could have been lingering? So other than this, I have a clean bill of health. That's good. So that's a good that's thing. That's comforting. And I fixed the one issue that I had before. Right. Um. So that that's what I've been on, man. That's so, what I meant so about So hence dizzy. the not drinking. Sticking with the not drinking. And this, but I, even before this, I right. was probably, dude, for me personally, and this is me personally, I know other people are different from me, but for me... I think we've talked about this to nauseam. Is that how you say it? I love that word. At, at nauseam. At, at nauseam, yeah. At nauseam. <laughs> yeah, your, your boy been reading a little bit. <laughs> uh, so I've been speaking about this at nauseam, but for me, just personally, the drinking just doesn't. And and and, the, and the, now the more, the further I go, the more it's like, why you gonna throw why it go away back? for for what for a couple hours which uh, of a feel that you will feel like shit later. It is a poison to your body. I have more reason now to not poison my body. So to go back to the first issue, because I was like, well, is this hereditary, this CLL thing? And he goes, well, no, no. It's just, it's just an unlucky fucking thing. It's the luck know? of the drug. Unless, unless something triggered it, like COVID maybe, but you know, we don't know. Um, and he goes, uh, so I'm like, well, is there anything I could do to maybe help the process? He goes, unfortunately, not really. He goes, except... If it does get to a point where we got to do some real, some, some real treatments, it just would behoove you to have your body in as optimal as it can be. So he goes, maybe stay on that, you know, to get you in shape. So if we, let's say I have to go through chemo or whatever I got to go through to fix whatever. Right. My body's just super strong to deal with it. And, and what is, like, if things were to get worse or progress in a negative way for you, like, after a couple of these So the like absolute what- worst thing, and the little bit I read, and again, I just, I just started reading today because I tried to stay away from this. So I'm not very, very educated on it yet. Um, it's uh, to a degree, it's almost out of sight, out of mind, but mm-hmm. also got to be a little, you know, it's a weird you need to balance. be conscious of it, but you don't want to invest too much energy or, yeah, especially or if it's, negative. It is thoughts. what it is, right? It is what it is. Um, just kind of so, take so, it as it comes. And then the, the, the absolute worst thing would be a blood transfusion. Uh, the thing that on the Mayo Clinic was like, this is extremely rare. This is like where they take the blood out of you and then a donor would give you blood, that kind of thing. Yeah. Right, right. And now they were like, this is like ridiculously rare. But there's definitely, and I, I could be mistaken, but I saw, I read something that said pill, like a pill chemotherapy. You ever heard of that? Uh, no. I guess I don't even really know how the chemotherapy works, but it's, I don't know. But the, the, and then there's. Yeah, I thought it was an injectable kind of thing oh so even, like you're on an iv like you sit there and you're it's like you're on a drip for okay so so to uh, me i, I had no idea I what know. it is i thought i was going to like a machine or something they're just gonna blast you know i, I, I didn't know right i'm just unaware of what the shit was but uh but there's like there's a few options and it, and then and none of them seemed crazy you know what I'm saying? And then the, the cutting out of the lymph node, that's only on a personal level if it gets that's worse for a, you. According to what he said, if it, it's, he would More cut him out. Comfort level. Comfort level. Or like if you don't want to see it or whatever. Gotcha. But like you can't really tell. I mean, I guess you can kind of. Can you kind of see that? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. When I do that? Well, when you. Yeah. Yeah. So, and again, if I'm just sitting normal, like I said, I feel a little weird because, like, is it my neck? You know, like I have full range. Right. But that's you, what makes you notice me it when you, when you look left? It just, it just feels like it's just something there, which might be. I mean, there is something there, right? You know? So, <laughs> I don't know, but like I said, if it, if it can, if it if it becomes something that is not bearable, then I'm gonna go in there and have them fucking remove it, you know. And I believe that is it just one or is it multiple? I don't even know I how got, many. Like, I have multiple enlarged lymph nodes. Like how throughout many, my body? How many do you have? Like on your? I guess we all have tons. Okay. All throughout our body. 
And I guess the lymph nodes are there, if I'm not mistaken, to to like filter out bullshit. And the, unfortunately, my regular blood is the bullshit. Unluckily, you know what I'm saying. Like I normally, like if you like you said, if you have an infection of a cold or something, they would swell up. Mm-hmm. Um, so it is what it is, man. But and, I, and I'm just no longer. And now saying this out and open, this is the first. This is the right now. This is the first. The first I've told you. Yeah, I, shit, man. Only pe- only a way a, to bring me down. I came <laughs> here in a pretty fucking good mood. No, no, but no, but, 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 but t- you know what? The good. It's it is a good mood because like it could have been way worse. Fuck yeah, dude. It could have been way worse, and it's something that can be managed and deleted, technically. You know, right. so, like, I mean, fuck. I mean, if to go through something, like, it's the thing to go did, through. Did he say what, like, the best case scenario was? Like, if you're... To do nothing. To do nothing. And yep. just keep getting checked up every mm-hmm. three months, but it's not something that's just going to go away. No. So it's just something you just need to continually monitor. Yep. He said uh, you come back every three months for a while. But if it's not so, so if it's not something that will go away on its own, but if it's something that could be treated to eliminate, why not treat it to just okay. eliminate it? So I actually got this, and I'll read exactly what it is because I because I was thinking the same thing. Why not just get rid of it now? So I'll read this. Give me a second. But maybe the process to the cure is more damaging to the body in the long uh, run. That's kind of what I'm. This is kind of what they said. Give me two seconds. Uh, here we go. So this is what it says. Um, people with early stage chronic lymphomic leukemia typically don't receive treatment. Studies have shown that early treatment doesn't extend lives for people with early stage chronic lymphoma. Rather than put you through the potential side effects of complications of treatment before you need it, doctors carefully monitor your condition and reverse treatments for when your leukemia progresses. Gotcha. Notice they said when your leukemia. So that's so it's something that probably it's a cancer, so it will. Right. Even, but it's extremely slow moving. Like it could be like multiple, multiple, multiple years before it's even a thing. Uh, I did a little. So that's what that is. So and then so he said, so you're going to do a couple. We'll do. Three months every, you know, maybe like three, four times just to monitor. And then if you start feeling good and we're like, okay, nothing's really happening, then we'll extend Six it. Six months or something. And it would do like one of those. So that's where I'm at, man. Wow. So geez. I'm just stage, you know, try to stay strong and fuck it. Uh, well, cheers to you. Yeah, man. Fuck it. But like I said, I'm, I'm going to use I'm gonna use this as a two. One, if the, if that ain't enough well, you'll motivation. Find the, you'll find the silver lining. You know me, man. Right? <laughs> and that's kind of what, um, that's kind of what I wanted to go with this pod is because for the last three weeks of having this fucking weird feeling that you're dead the only thing that truly mattered to me was my people the people nothing else mattered clothes you know fucking nice things or financials like don't give give none of that all i care about is i'm about to miss my people right which is a huge huge wake-up call to what's really important because right, listen, man. we're all gonna die anyway. So, which is also kind of in a weird way, it helps me feel a little better. Because listen, it's gonna happen anyway. Sure, and we're all going down that path e- eventually. And uh, thank God, I'm still on the path with y'all, where I should it should last a long time. But uh, it, I just, put, you know, I, I found myself not getting upset about shit, and I've already been working on that. But you know, I, I just, I'm like, man, you know, like a guy cut me off. I'm like, yeah, fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not gonna waste. Like, that seems like such a waste right. now. You're looking through a different lens now, of seeing big, bigger lens. picture, way bigger picture. And I'm, you know, it's like whoa. Not that you didn't see bigger picture before, but now it's, even it's, now it's, you see the bigger picture, even magnified. in the little littlest of things. So, uh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep smiling, and thank God it ain't the it ain't the end of the you know ain't the most vicious shit ever. And uh, you know, we can go for it, man. Well, and I think what would be forward. cool is to uh, talk. To someone else who's probably gone through it or has this and, and see what they go through. But it's not like you don't really hear a ton of people. I don't feel like I've heard anything about anybody dying from this. No, I've never even heard of CLL until yeah. I walked into your or even this. Until even I like, walked into the studio today. You like you like that, right? I do. I love it. It actually I've seen it on the uh, on the interweb on some posts and stuff. But yeah, I like it a lot. It's yeah. nice. It's clean. Picked good color. Yeah. So here's what's funny about that color. Uh, I didn't. They have oops paints. I was going to ask you, was it an oops paint? It was an oops paint. <laughs> so I went in it because I want it gray. So for those who can't see on YouTube, it's like a powder blue. I don't know. What kind of. What kind I, would, of I wouldn't know. I don't know about powder blue. Well, I feel powder like blue is a little. What kind of. What would you say? It's a weird. I, I would light say it's blue. like a, a, a gray marine aqua blue. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a. Dirter. It's, it's like a. 
to me, it's very similar to like a a boy's a baby boy's room blue. I would call maybe a it little a greener sunbay foam, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> definitely got some foam in it. Right, right. Anyways, but I was gonna do like a nice gray because I think that'd be cool too. There's definitely some gray in this blue. Yeah, but it's like a hint of gray. Hint. It's a hint. I don't know, man. You think it's a lot of gray? It ain't a lot of gray. I mean, it's not gray, but it's a gray. It's blue. It's blue. Yeah, see, you say powder blue. I I see gray. I see gray blue. All right, gray blue. From someone who's had picked a lot of paint colors and had a lot of different samples up on walls and different things in his house all over the place, man, this is a gray blue. All right. I I trust you. (laughs) So anyway, so I I actually feel bad because I had had them make me the gray I wanted. Right? And And they're kind of expensive. Like a bucket was like sixty bucks. I got some decent shit, right? Like sixty bucks, like bur bear, bear, bear. Yeah, why are you getting the best ass paint, man? Yeah, you know, I'm just the podcast I mean, for the best for the listeners. Yeah. Which one did you end up going with? The oops? No, I think it was still. I went with the oops, but it was still a good brand. Yeah. But, but they put the color on the top of right. the oops, and it was like substantially. It was like a lot cheaper. It was like like ten dollars. Well, right, because they already made the money off the first asshole. Now they're making another ten off of you. Oh, that's good. I didn't even think that's a good point. <laughs> You probably could have asked them to take it for five. And they well, no, because they probably returned it. You, you can't return paint. Well, I guess you can, right? Cause it's so how would there. they get it? Yeah. Unless somebody just fucked it up, I guess. So anyways, I'm like, so mind you, I had to make the first one. And I'm like walking around. And I'm like, oh, what is that? You know. You just exchange. So I just paint. literally just like. <laughs> so I feel bad. But fuck it. So you just put it down where the oops was? I put it where the oops was. And, That's and, awesome. and switched it. And I was like, fuck it. But I, and I ended up liking it. It actually works out. I think it's pretty good. I like it a lot. And then I, got, I bought these little Cares None fucking the, the letters. So did you put these up yourself? <laughs> I did. Uh, you know what? I think not drinking helps you because they look pretty. Uh, and I guess. And I, I, I didn't, they look pretty OK. And, well, and I didn't do any kind of like all. I, that was all eyeball. For all eyeball. It's 100 percent eyeball. Well, you can tell that. But, uh, but but from on there you can't tell. Like sitting up close, you can maybe tell, but you can't really tell. No, it look, no, on, on the camera it looks great. Yeah, it looks great. For, it looks great here too. And, uh, and some of the things are they're not exactly the same fucking size. All of them either. Which is I odd. gotcha. Like that E in there. Look, like the E and the R. The E is clearly bigger than the R. Right. Like longer. Yeah, and, and like from where I'm sitting, it looks like it's going. It's almost like a curve. Yeah, and the, and no. the one is down there, but it looks it looks good on. It looks fine. No, on and if you and if you if you're nitpicking, it's got that little curve on there. You too. zoom if in you, on the 4K. Yeah, if you if you zoom in, there's a slight little what do you call it? An arc. Yeah, arch. A little arc. Yeah, I see that. But whatever. Hey, fuck y'all. I'm trying this much. <laughs> you know. Um, and you know, no, I had to, and you know I had to get these shoes up here. These are the Cares None yes, shoes. Yes, so I had to get those up. Shout out to Nick. Yeah, I've only seen these once or twice. Yeah, man, and it's got the cares none under the lip. I mean, it's missing the A because he couldn't get or the E or whatever. But cares none. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> but I had to get to me. I had to get those up to this. Oh right? yeah, it man, was perfect for this. Those are cool. And you know, I got to keep the good vibes going. So yeah, but uh, so did that uh, the podcast, and I figured out how to do the editing where it's like it's a production value. I don't know if you've been seeing that, but I know how to do it where it's. It's not just one continuous picture. I, I've learned how to. Oh, do cut, do some to, cuts. Do some cuts where it's just you, then it's just me, oh, then it's cool. both. So I know how to do that. Gotcha. See, so things are going pretty good as far as that's concerned. That's very good. And you're still, uh, you're not at uh, Turf anymore, right? You're, no, you're, you've been no, done. No. Okay. No, fuck that place. All right. Great. Yeah. No, fuck that place. They ain't, yeah. Fuck them. But anyways, um, so yeah. Other than that, though, oh, how about this election, huh? Which election? Was there an election? Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> What's going it's on? It's still good. I don't know, man. It, it's not over, but it's over. <laughs> you know, we, I, I kind of, I was like, all right, there's no, uh, Trump's winning. That's what I'm thinking this whole time. I'm like, Trump's going to win. Yeah, man. I'm, so, you know, I don't know. I mean, I felt that way going into it, you know, and then as it got closer and stuff, you know, you listen to everything on the news and stuff and Biden's got a double digit lead here, you know, 15 Yeah, but, but I've been hearing a lot of stuff about those, those polls. It's kind of a good point. Like. They just call people and ask, right? And it, it's the same process that in 2016 thought that was bullshit, right? So I don't know, but still, you hear all that stuff and everybody's saying the same stuff. It's like, just damn, man! Like, really? Like, that doesn't feel right. I mean, you see all these Trump parades, like boats and like miles long car processions, and, and, and they got and you saw and then they would, it wasn't Biden, but it was the fucking bus. One of his campaign buses. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Yeah, but like you see all this stuff, <laughs> and I, but you don't see any of that kind of like crazy like. 
rah rah for Biden. No. So you feel like the pulse of like what's going on is like, oh man, like th- those polls are wrong, and there's a lot more support out there for Trump than. Oh, and it's probably those closet Trump supporters too. One right. One of all. I mean, even in the restaurant and stuff, like more so. I mean, I, sitting at the well when bars were were open not so long ago. Uh, <laughs> you know, but like the people that would talk about at the bars. I mean, you'd you'd hear way more people talking about like tr- supporting Trump versus any enthusiasm for Biden. For sure. You know, for sure. So with all those things, I felt like it was going to be more of a Trump victory. Listen, it might still be with some bullshit. I mean, I don't know. I'll tell you this, though. Well, like, until he's out of office, it ain't over. And, you know, there's still a very narrow path for him to squeak it through. And he might not be like, well, fuck, I ain't leaving. Yeah, I don't know if he's going to be like that. People say that, but I don't know. Did you think there was going to be a civil war situation? No. You keep hearing that kind of shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's just some media shit trying to scare people. I think, man. It's just, just trying to create more divide. Biggest enemy of the people is the media. Oh, it is by far. And I guess we're kind of part of the media, no? Well, I don't know. Aren't Social we? media. Social media. <laughs> Hi. Don't yeah. hate each other. No, I uh so I, I I knew I know this girl who's got a black son. White girl. White black, girl, black son. Black son. And she goes and she's like, I don't I I I, I voted for Trump and I feel terrible. <laughs> he actually did a lot better this uh this go around with uh the debate no well that but with uh black votes and uh hispanic votes right so i think yeah for sure he did he did a lot better uh but it was it was it was interesting coming from her because she felt like genuinely bad but she but where she was coming from was like fiscally she was thinking about the republican side versus so i, I and i was talking to mike earlier about this i think a lot of people are socially liberal but then like when it comes to but they're fiscally republican yeah and i feel like i'm not even that far from that myself because i really don't give a fuck what you do for your like go fuck who you want do what right you want. I, like, yeah call yourself a girl or feel it be a girl i don't know whatever i just don't give a fuck about that at all no i also probably want the government out of my money i probably you know what right. I'm saying? so let I, your freak flag fly let yeah. me earn what i earn and yeah, you know who gives a fuck yeah I still don't understand how someone can give a fuck about someone else's like preferences. It just doesn't like I don't give a fuck who you're fucking, who you. I just don't. Okay, who cares? Right. I don't care. <laughs> like I just don't understand how people care. Like why do you care? And here's my thing: I don't think most people do. I think the internet makes it seem like like a lot of people do because the people who do care are they have a loud ass bark and the, and the internet gives them an amplified voice. But I feel like most people, uh, for, listen, I, we've talked about this to uh, ad nauseum. I was, just, I, was, I was about to help you out there, but you got it. I, I, I saw the gerbil yeah, running on the wheel. We talked about this a lot, but it's like, at, at least in my experience, most people are in the fucking middle of shit. Right. Almost all people. Like, 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 you know what I'm saying? And I feel like even if you take some of these same people that have that loud bark and stuff on Twitter or Facebook or whatever take that same person and put them at a set in an apartment with some friends talking or whatever they're not going to be that loud right they're i mean they'll they'll, they'll get their opinion across but it's not going to have, have as much bite to it right 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 you know i i think people i don't know there's just a different feeling i think when you're typing away your feelings or typing away your opinions within the comfort of your own home or whatever well, well that's a that's a big key like you if you say some hurtful shit, which we know the internet has a lot of, are you going to say that to my face? Right. Odds are no. Most people ain't just talking crazy unless it's maybe And liquor. even if you do say it, there will be a different, I think, context to it versus me just reading it. Oh, for sure. And, and putting my own spin on it in my for own context, sure. you know. That's the problem with text. If I, if I write on the internet, you know, or I send you a text, you're a piece of shit. You know, it's like, what the fuck, man? But if we're here just talking, I'm like, Chris, man, you're a piece of shit. Right. Context, like, it, it just, it, it's not going to feel the same. Unless I'm saying to Chris, you're, no, you're a fucking piece of shit. Unless you saw, I guess video would be a little easier to see it. But like, just reading it through the words, it's hard, man. It's hard to get the context of something through words. That's why text yeah. messaging can get a little weird. That, and that, honestly, that's, emojis actually help with that a little bit. A little bit. bit, right. A little bit. Um, but voice is probably the best way to help with that. But even that ain't a hundred percent because 
I could probably give you some body language that would just differ from my voice inflection, and it can mean two different things. Sure. You know, that's And it. I feel more and more people are just co- choosing to communicate via text. I mean, and it's it's convenient. Right. I know, like, half the time. You can have a conversation with four people at the same time while still watching watching a movie or something. Right. Uh, as a matter of fact, like, I do, I do a lot of my shit through text, like, They'll, they'll, do you want this through text or through email or do you want to call? I'm like, text me. Text me. I'm going to check my email. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, you know? I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> right, right. Or like even uh, if I'm going through something with like um, like Google, I got the phone, I'm trying to fix something, right? I'll, I'll go through the, the messenger, you know? It's probably a little slower than going through, you know, maybe calling them. Right. But it's just- Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're You know about. what I'm saying? Or like anybody, I just rather use the text feature- so I don't know. I I just or more. It's more of an instant message feature than yeah. it is the text. But it's the same principle, right? Uh, I, I personally love that medium, but it can get skewed. So I try to make. I try to talk as much as I can in the words to to try to help portray what I'm saying because I know shit can get skewed differently. You know, I'm super big into context. Sure. You know, and there's not enough of that. There's not enough people doing that. Why do you think that is? Or is it just back to everything? Just. The, the way society is now and people just getting comfortable and getting further away just from face-to-face interaction. Yeah, with the whole... And comfort thing, right? with face-to-face interaction. Probably, man. Probably. I just think that... I don't, I don't know if we were... If we're ready for social media. You know, it's kind of... It's a big responsibility. It is. As a matter of fact, before you got here, I'm, I'm watching the podcast, uh, Joe Rogan and Jack Dorsey, the guy who owns Twitter. Okay. And uh, they're going back and forth. Is this a new one? I don't know. It might be like a year or something okay. old. Because he just got grilled that Jack Dorsey guy, right? From I don't know what happened. What'd you hear? Just something about stuff censoring stuff prior to the election, leading up to like all that stuff uh, with uh, Hunter Biden. Oh, and like what? what you know and how what social media was that. suppressing some of it or not covering it, and so this this dude Tim Pool was all Tim Pool was grilling him on the Rogan podcast. Rogan was kind of like the mediator, so to speak. And it's very interesting because, look, man, th- this fucking platform was created not that long ago, and it, it, it was meant to be, like, this fun kind of thing that turned into, like, w- like a free speech in social media in general. Like, it's life now. Right. It's, it's, not, it's no longer just a, a novelty. It's a, it's a real thing. And, and people it's given are, everybody a voice. And, it, like, it can cause some shit, too, you know? You, if, if I got a bunch of followers and I say, hey, this motherfucker's fucking me, go kill him— People have gotten hurt or killed over these situations. So it's like it's now a real thing. There's like governments and shit. And, you know, so social media, it's, it's real now. And it's funny because like I do a lot of social, you know, all my shit's on social media. Right. And I just decided to take advantage of it. And I still sometimes get people say like, oh, what are you trying to be? Is your social media? Like, what are you like? I'm not I'm not into social media. I'm like, well, unfortunately, the world is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Facebook is two billion something people. Two billion. That's that's a big deal. That's a big fucking deal. Maybe more than two billion. Do they accounts. do they lead all those uh, social media uh, conglomerates? Like, do they have more users Facebook than like say Twitter or Instagram? Like, who's the who's like the leader of fucking who's got the most? Yeah, it's not MySpace anymore, is it? It should be. <laughs> it should be. <laughs> Bring time back. All right, this. Which platform on social media has the most followers or users? Users. Here's a summary from Statista. Facebook is still the top social network in the United States, with 169.76 million mobile users accessing the Facebook app in September 2019. And that was just in the U.S. See what I'm saying? Right. And that was a couple years back, so this is like an old thing. So, oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Seven days ago. Here we go. What is the most popular social media platform worldwide? Market leader Facebook was the first social network to surpass 1 billion registered accounts and currently sits at more than 2.7 billion monthly active users. Woo! Okay. Let me keep reading this. This is that's interesting. That's crazy. That's a lot of reach, man. That that's like that's it's global. So and how many what's the what's the global population? Uh, 7 point something? Billion? So almost half? No. Yeah. So here we go. I'm going to keep reading. Uh, How many of those people voted for Trump? (laughs) That's a good point. (laughs) The company currently also owns four of the biggest social media platforms with all over a billion monthly active users. Facebook, WhatsApp, 
Messenger, and Instagram. Mm, what's what's app? What's that, app? That's like one of their. It's that's one of the. I've never even heard of that one. Yeah, WhatsApp. Like, I don't know. It's, it was really big for like messaging, hmm. especially like globally because. And you, then their messenger. So that's separate than Facebook. Yep, their messenger app. Well, you have to get two apps now. But remember, before that, it wasn't that way. Then they switched it to. Gotcha. You had to get two, but I think I could be wrong. Well, you can still do it through Facebook, but I do have two separate. I I have like a Facebook. And do you have that little weird the messen- the the, messenger? The messenger, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you know that that little fucking yeah. the picture. That's how I draw it. It's pictionary. <laughs> it's like a circle with some two lines in it. Or something. Right. Yeah. That's or what a little like, sideways phone. lightning bolt or yeah, something. Let me tell you exactly what it is. It's a it's a circle with a lightning bolt. I just said that. <laughs> is that what you said? Is your, I said a sideways lightning bolt. Oh, but with the, it's a, like a circle, almost like a thought. Like a thought bubble? Like a thought bubble, yeah. yeah. Or a messenger bubble? Is it purple and blue? Yeah, they just changed it. That's a recent thing, too. It used to be like blue-blue. Right. Mine used to be blue-blue. And then you get like, t- how about this? How many monthly users does TikTok have? 500 million. According to Business of Apps, TikTok is available in over 150 markets around the world in 39 languages. The latest available official statistics show that there are 500 million TikTok users around the world. Well, that hasn't even been around that long, I feel. Right. And don't forget, a lot of uh, India banned it. So that would have been a billion people. India banned it? Yes. How come? I don't really know the reasons, but they banned it. That's what the whole shit about America was about. The Trump was talking about banning it. So like, I guess it's because China owns it or the, the company's a China company. And I guess there's some weird things that they're getting some weird information from us from being on the app. Uh, and they're, it's kind of, are they, is, is it nefarious? You don't know. Like, what are they doing? And, you know, so that's what the whole, so India, it's banned in India. Gotcha. So how many users they lose off that? Right. Cause India has a billion. People. Yeah. And you're, you, you use TikTok, right? Yeah. Not enough. Not enough. I need to go harder because like, you know, cause especially what I'm trying to do, I, I want to get exposure. But um, I, I, you know what it is. I don't. What I'm not a big fan of of TikTok. I don't even know what it is exactly. I just thought it was originally just for doing stupid dances. Yeah, I mean, I guess yeah, it's still that. But it's just uh, it's, you get this little 15 or I think 30 second clips. Maybe it's a minute clip. Um, or you get to choose and you get put music. But people do dances. People do like I've put some of my skits on there. It's, gotcha. Because have you when it first came out, that everybody was doing like these stupid like TikTok dance video. Yeah, yeah. Right. And it's still a lot channels. of that. It's okay. still a lot of that. But it, it, it's evolved way more than that now. Uh, but it's actually called TikTok. A lot, Tit- lot of breast. A lot of breasts on TikTok. A lot of bre- if you like breasts, that's the fucking app to get. How hard is it to get on? It? <laughs> <laughs> the problem is, do I need a referral code? Well, I was talking about this. I forgot which podcast I was just who I was. Oh, it was my the last podcast I was on. Uh, a lot of it's it's a very younger younger crowd. You know, a lot of a lot of TikTok users. You know, 13, 14, 15, 16. Oh, I don't. So wanna, I'm not about that. That's what I'm saying. You'll be <laughs> scrolling. Well, it's not just though. There's older motherfuckers too. But uh, you'll be scrolling, and then they have this thing called the For You page. So it's just what, what the algorithm thinks you'll like to see. And, just, and yours always chose tits. Well, it's not just <laughs> mine. It's, there's a re- it's called tit talk for a reason. And, and then unfortunately, people like tits, you know? So when you're shaking <laughs> your tits around, and then you, then you go to click on the bio, and the girl's like, I'm 16. You're like, oh. <laughs> you know, it's kind of fucked up. <laughs> Delete. Yeah, Black. it's super fucked up. Uh, but it's just billions of them, and it's on your For You page. So it's like, you know, it's like, fuck. And they huh. know what they're doing. <laughs> they know what yeah, they're you doing. Know, you come on, you shake like, and there's literally dances where they go, and they like shake the tits. So it's like, okay, what the fuck's going on, you know? But uh, as far as the the, re- the retail social, media, it's it's global now. So when someone is India the only other major country that's banned it? Let's see. What countries have banned TikTok? According to Wikipedia, it has been banned by the government of India since June 2020, along with 223 other Chinese apps in response to a border clash with China. Pakistan banned TikTok, citing immoral and indecent videos on the 9th of October 2020, but reversed its ban 10 days later on the 19th of October 2020. Well, that's recent. Yeah, it was like this. This is like a whole new thing. Yeah. So recent. So really, just India right now, and then Pakistan did it for ten days. But the problem with India, there's a lot of motherfuckers in India. Well, there's quite a few. I think it's a billion. Uh, what would you say? And wait, if you said the whole global population is what's the whole global population? So I know there's a billion motherfuckers in China. What is the population of the planet? <laughs> 
the planet. In 2018, the population of Earth was 7,594,270,356. 7.59 billion. Jeez. And it's going up, baby. It's going up. We were at, in the 60s, we were at 3 billion. Wow. So 60 years later, we've doubled that. (laughs) More than doubled that. More than doubled that. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, right there. In the middle of the 2B and the 4B at 1960. So, I don't know. Oh, so India. So, yeah, I don't know if they're... Uh, I'm going to say I'm going a- 850 a, million. I'm going to Bill Ball. I'm going to Bill. <sighs> How many people are in India? You're probably right. In 2018, the population of India was 1,352,617,328. How many people do you think are in China? More than that. How much? They were they were one point three. I'll go one point six for China. How many people China. are in China? <laughs> China. In twenty eighteen, the population of China was one billion three hundred ninety two million seven hundred. So just about the same years ago. So it could yeah. be more now, but but still, you know how many people are in the U.S. Right? No. Really? No. Take a guess. I've been wrong two times. Let's go 925 million. You're going, you think the, the United States is close to a billy, huh? Uh, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> that's the number I threw out. How many people? I, I know the answer to this, but I, I know that can't be that. right. I mean, because if that's the case, because we only had X amount of people, I don't know. I'm going to say 500 million. How many people are in, in the United States of America? 14.6 million members. No, that's wrong. Here's a summary from Wikipedia. How many people live in the United States of America? In 2019, its population was 328,239,500. So that's crazy. That's crazy that almost like a third of the world's population is between India and China. Wait, it's China. China. <laughs> I can't even do it. I'll it's, tell you what, the, hey, kind of off topic. If if off topic is the topic. <laughs> well, if Biden comes in office, yes. How long do you think he'll stay in office before his vice president takes over? Twenty minutes. <laughs> Twenty. <laughs> you barely think. Uh, but I was gonna say, listen, Trump could be a piece of shit. Whatever you feel about him, the motherfucker is very clearly entertaining. <laughs> clearly, I, I don't get. Like, he's just kept. You just want to watch. Like, look, it's almost like a Howard Stern. Situation. What's gonna happen though? Who, who, what, who, what is everyone going to talk about if it is Biden? What well, is he, SNL going to do? Wait, and some people are okay with this. Some people are like, you know, we just need a little break. You know, we just need a break from craziness for a while. And I'm okay. I, I get that. If he loses, can he rerun in four years? That's a good question. I don't know. Like, are you are you allowed? You're allowed two terms. Yeah, I guess you should be able to. Do they have I'm to sure be consecutive? Happened. How would I ask that? I have no I'm idea. Not gonna, I'm not even going to try. I'll fuck that up. But that's a good point. That's a good point. Because he's crazy enough to do it. <laughs> because I know uh, Kamala, she's going to probably try to run for it, too. You know what I'm saying? Uh, if she's not already president by then. If she's not already yeah, president. She right. would probably rerun as the president. Right, right. It's crazy fucking world we live in. But she, at least she comes off kind of presidential, and she's obviously with it. She, You know, whether or not you fuck with her policies or not. Right. She's, like, able-minded, young. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> she, can, she can think and speak in a clear sentence. Right. And, where, and here's the crazy thing about Biden. He's about to sur- he surpassed the uh, Barack Obama for the most votes ever for a president, right? Which again is by nuts. like point, but but it's not from my theory is it has nothing to do with Biden. It's because of Trump. A, a Trump, and I guess there's a lot of ballots coming in. Mike said he just saw this that it's going to be about eighty. Mi- they think that Biden will get eighty million votes. So and it's and, and again, not no one's really like you. Like you just said there's no signs and no fucking street. You know, there's no fucking Biden paraphernalia. You know, this, right? Uh, but with B- Barack, there was a ton of that. Sure, people li- liked him. You know, he liked, but like, no one really likes B- Biden that much. He gets the. It's almost like you get a you get a little clout because you were with Barack. So you and know, you're not Trump. And you're not Trump. Those are the best. Those are your two best qualities, which is crazy. They're like, they, which is crazy. Kanye probably could. I bet you Kanye could win if if he could clean up some of the craziness. Mm, it's a big stretch. I mean, we said the same thing about Trump. That's true. 
<laughs> we said the same thing about Trump. Now, you know who would have a really good shot is The Rock. Yes. We, I think we've talked about that. I, I think that I would vote just clearly on what I think he is. I don't give a fuck about his policy. I don't give a fuck about <laughs> nothing. He just seems like a leader. He seems presidential, like he would know how to clean it up. He seems he comes off as strength. He's because he's a fucking monster, right? And he also comes off as like uh, like he's gen- like gen- like he cares. Like again, it could all be bullshit, but it comes off that way. I think if he ran, I also think Rogan would fucking have a. He, he's made it very clear he'll never do it, but I think he would win. I think uh, I think The Rock would have a better chance. I feel over Rogan. Ooh, explain. I'm not. I, I don't. I don't know as much about Rogan as you do, and I like Rogan, but I th- I feel. I f- I feel, The Rock is already out. I feel he's out there more. Not that people don't know Rogan, but I think Rogan might carry a different stigma to him because of his podcast. Do you know that Joe Rogan has multiple hundreds of millions of downloads for his podcast? Yes, you've. Tell me that at least twice every time I'm here. Pot, multiple hundreds of millions per month. His shit is also now global. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like It's like, whoa, his podcast now can dictate policy. How, how is he doing on, on the new platform? With Is it with Sirius? Uh, it it's uh, Spotify. Spotify. He, uh, he actually came out because somebody asked him about this. And he was like, how, you know, did you lose? Because... He, he thought he might lose listeners because he goes, actually, no, I actually gained more because he got some of the loyal spot of people who were just fucking with Spotify right. are now fucking with him. So he goes, it actually like went up a lot. So he says, the rich get richer, right? <laughs> Fuck. His pocket. And it's just so, so vicious. And now he's just get the biggest names in the world. Has he been having any issues? Cause I thought I was reading something about him being... Or the the people at Spotify yeah. wanted to censor him, or and some then, kind of control gave, over. He gave him a big suck my dick cares none because that was like in his contract, right? Like I have all all the supposedly. Control for my now show. there was a little conspiracy about that because when the shit first went live, a lot of the episodes that were controversial because that, that's one thing cool. That's one thing I like about his podcast is that what is that shit? Did you fart? No, man, that smells like smells like some skunk. Oh, f- probably outside then. I mean, it is nice as hell. It was like 70 degrees outside. It's beautiful yeah. outside. Uh, so he fucking... Would you fart? Would you shit? Would you... <laughs> like, yeah, I smelled something. Yeah, <laughs> like, I shit my fuck, pants. Yeah, you're like, talking to you with a smile. Yeah, I like the fuck. Um, so he had a couple of the controversial episodes. Oh, mind you, that's what's cool about his podcast is he'll bring on people that doesn't that isn't necessarily with the narrative of the way the world's going because and I and I agree with that. I smell it strong now. That's a skunk. I mean, who's there's no weed in here. Oh well. Mike don't smell like that. Maybe you're not. I didn't or have something. any. Maybe. And um I feel like we need more of that. And so for instance, Mike was uh just on someone else's podcast, and you know he kind of did the whole switch from being a Democrat to Republican, and he's kind of like hardcore, a Trump guy. He got the hat now, like he, you know, and um, and for the people who heard this, he was on the podcast. They they know what it's talking about. I don't know if you knew, but uh, I, I'm starting to, I, and we've talked about this before. I don't think it's fair to categorize all the Trump supporters as racist because it's very clear. You know what I'm saying? Like I know, sir, I I know quite a few now, and 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 especially before, maybe now I can see more of an argument. But even now, and, and it's tough because it, like that's kind of what he represents. Unfortunately, you know that to side. some people. I don't well, know. at least as far as like online, you, you if you're a Trump supporter, you're a racist. That's like the narrative, going right? On, right, you right. Know? And that sucks because that is the narrative, even though that might not be true. But it's it's like. Are those people saying, well, I don't believe that bullshit, so fuck with you. I'm not a racist, and just because you feel that way doesn't mean that I am. But then there's that the whole idea. It's like, well, the the narrative is that side is a, race, is a racist side, and you fuck with it. So it's a very touchy subject, because I, don't, I, I do believe that if you racist, you fucking with Trump. That's a fact. And I think no one can deny that. Do you agree? Yeah. I mean, I don't think... I don't think there's too many Trump supporters... I mean, too many racists fucking with Biden. I haven't heard anybody say, 
fuck people of color. Or you wouldn't Biden have heard it because the media wouldn't have said it. No, that's a good point. But he, I just haven't even heard it on social media. I haven't heard it. Right. Anytime, anytime I've read anything remotely. But Biden's been accused of being racist. Oh, for sure. No, so, for so, sure. So by that same thought and he's, crisis. And he's, put, he's probably put more blacks in behind and, and with Kamala in behind bars over some dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? So listen. I I'm Trump's a, let them all out. I, so listen. <laughs> I get that. There's, clear, there's been clearly... A fucking smear on this fool's name. Obviously. He's so against the grain. He's putting a wrench and all this shit. And I think that was what a lot of what people liked him. He's like, right. fuck. And we talked about this on the pod. You know what, man? Fuck it. Just throw this guy in there. He's clearly not. System ain't broken. Let's break it. Let's break it. You know? And he's break it and build it better. He clearly ain't one of the rest of these fools that we've all been fucked. Uh, I've been doing a lot. Not a lot of research, but I've been keeping more like we all have. And I guess a lot of people have been saying that, like, the shit that he was saying in the beginning, he ain't really been sticking to it. Like, what? can we talk about this wall? Yeah, what about the wall? Like, yeah, what about the wall? What about the wall? My point exactly. What the, what the fuck? Is, that was like one of the biggest things. He's built over 400 miles of wall. <laughs> Wait, how big is the wall? So he says 400 miles? I think they've built about 400 miles worth of wall. I thought I heard that. How many miles? I haven't been down there to see the wall. <laughs> how, how would I... Uh, how would I Google that? How, how many miles? How much wall? How much wall did Trump build? There you go. How much wall did Trump build? <laughs> According to Wikipedia, by September 25th, 2020, 321 miles of barrier had been constructed during the Trump presidency. According to CBP, 400 miles had been built by October 29th, 2020, with a goal of 450 miles total by the end of the year. There you go. Oh, so he did, motherfucker. Do it. First of all, promises made, yeah. promises kept. <laughs> yeah. Wait, w- w- were you a wall guy? Yeah, I'm a wall guy. <laughs> I'm not like why. Okay, okay, what was your reasoning for why you need this fucking wall? To keep the riffraff out. You know, the drug dealers, the murderers, <laughs> the rapists. <laughs> the rapist. <laughs> fucking rapists, man. You gotta keep them out. And and is this? A, are you strong in that? I mean, not like strong, strong, like fuck you if you're against the wall. But I mean, I think the wall is a good idea. I think borders are a good idea, especially if you have a problem at that. that, I mean, we don't have the same problem on the northern border with the, you know, with drugs and whatever. I mean, you have some problems with that. Sure. I mean, anytime you got an open border, you got to have some stuff going on. But the, the influx of illegal immigration and drugs and sex trafficking coming in through the southern border was mm-hmm. a thing. And every president before Trump. I mean, the wall, Trump, it wasn't Trump's idea. He wasn't the first one to say, let's build a wall. It just became an idea because everyone said he was racist and he said, build a wall. And they're like, oh, that racist motherfucker. You knew he wanted a wall. Obama ran on building a wall and protecting our southern border, but no one talks about it. Yeah. So it's like they went straight to Trump and the racism thing. It's like, you know, and And he was the brash one, too, that said, you know what? Yeah, we're going to build a wall. Mexico's going to fucking pay for it. You know, like, and he just said, "Now I don't think that that's happened. I don't think so either. Okay. I, I mean, I, at least they didn't cut him a check, you know, but maybe there's been some kind of deficit. He's like, all right, yeah, we're going to get it. He might have pulled. Yeah. They might have got, you know, some kind of trade deficit thing or who knows, you know, they might have paid it in some way, but not necessarily like, all right, Mr. Trump, do I make this out to the USA or do I make this out to Donald J. Trump? Right, right, right. Because I know Mexico was like, we ain't paying for that motherfucker. Yeah, fuck like, you. You ain't paying for no fucking... You, you. We're trying to get rid of people, man. Right, right, right. Uh, I guess when you when you look at it from that perspective, yeah, man, you want to keep the bad shit out. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm weird about borders in general because... And again, I, you got it, it, to me, it's a touchy subject because we were lucky to be born in these these borders we could have easily been born in fucking afghanistan we could have easily been born somewhere else and it's like i understand that it was, i guess what the argument is well no no you can come over here just go through the proper right protocols or whatever procedures That's it. i'm cool with that and I, and I totally understand that um you put a fence around your house you're not saying don't come into my house you're just saying just ring the doorbell outside and if I want you to come in, yeah, I'll let you in. Right, right. So that's so I totally I I get that. But just the whole idea of it in general, I can it can get a little weird because and then like the whole pride thing is like, you know, we're proud Americans. Like, motherfucker, you were lucky to be you didn't ask to be born here. So to have that patriotism to me and to be so like, it's like Yeah, I'm not necessarily all, about it, but like I get it and it makes sense. And especially as the problems have become worse and you know, 
the problem with the open borders now, I think, on the southern border versus in the 60s or 50s or whatever, it's different. Crime's different. The world's different. And they've just gotten smarter and better to get the shit in, too. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, man, I just, uh, I'm I'm super into, uh, like, first of all, even just being alive, man. Like, none of it, like, it, off subject, this life is a, is a motherfucker, <laughs> right? It's such a motherfucker. And then, like, there's no, there's no rules, like, there was no pamphlet. <laughs> no. You know, there's, there's no, no instruction manual. Yeah, you know, you just kind of like, it's like you just, YouTube. Wake, you wake up in a game and then, you know, and thank God we got that. <laughs> Like you know me, like thank God we got that because that's helped me get through a ton of shit. But it's like, man, like this life shit's a motherfucker. So then, like, who are we to say, you know? And, and let's not forget how we came over here. And motherfuckers were already here, you know. And then, you know, to to be honest, I, Andrew Schultz made this joke, the, and it was funny. He goes, "Don't you think that the people who really want to make America great again would be like the Indians?" <laughs> I was like, "That's a great point." He goes. <laughs> He goes, you know what? Let's make America great again. Get the fuck out. Before these motherfuckers came here and killed us. And, and when are we going to talk about that? I feel like that that don't get enough play. Whoa. Like the George Floyd, we got some good play uh, as black people. We've getting definitely acknowledged. That's awesome. This year's been awesome for that. Um, and a lot of conversations are being had. That's one thing I've always said about Trump, whether it was him on purpose or not. He has been a good thing overall because a lot of conversations He's have been He's been a had. lightning rod for conversation starters. Right. <laughs> whether or not it's because of him or, you know, indirectly because of him, or that's not what I'm saying. I'm right. saying since he's been in office, a lot of shit has gotten better as far as, like, the conversations in just sure. alone. And um, which is which is crazy because even to say that some people – and that's what I don't like. I don't like that when you say something like that and if people don't listen to it in context – like, do you just, like, why can't I say that without you getting crazy? Like, to me, what am I saying that's fucked up about that statement? But some people will just stop you. But say anything positive Trump, right. you're stopped. Or anything negative Biden, you're stopped. It's like, well, no. Then the, first of all, they're all fucking human beings. And none of these, none of us are perfect. Right. And there's dirt on all of us. I promise you, if you had a fucking microphone around me for, the, for all of my life, you probably wouldn't want me running for president either. <laughs> I'd probably grab a motherfucker by the pussy too. You know what I'm saying? So, so I don't know. I just, I feel, I, I feel like uh, I'm just, and especially now with what I'm going through, and it's like I just, you know what? I'm just, I'm a little bit more easygoing all of a sudden. You know, just let it go. Yeah, you know, and it's like, but but going back to the point is, when are we going to talk about them? The 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 the, the, the Native Americans, bro. They were here first. They were here first. And I don't know, man. I don't know when they get their their time in the sun. That's like a, it's a thing. It's a thing. Now you know what? I want to play something. It's like a minute and a half, but it was a. And I want tell me how you feel about this, okay? It was on Shannon Sharp's uh, Instagram. It's a clip. Hold on, Shannon Sharp, and he was like, "America needs to hear this." And I don't even know who the fuck this dude is, but it sounded good. I'm just gonna play it. As a country, we're not unique in our evils. To be honest with you. Can you hear it? Um, I think where we where we may be singular is our fu- a refusal to acknowledge them mm. Mm. and the legends and myths we tell about our inherent, you know, goodness uh, to hide and cover and conceal, so that we can maintain a kind of willful ignorance that protects our innocence. Is he talking about so us as Americans? When the Tea Party was happening. We used people were we were saying pundits. Oh, it's just about economic populism. <laughs> it's not about race. When people knew, people knew, social scientists were already writing that what was driving the Tea Party were anxieties about demographic shifts, that the country was changing, that they were seeing these racially ambiguous babies on on Cheerios commercials, that the country wasn't quite feeling like it was a white nation anymore. And people were screaming from the top of their lungs, yo, this is not just simply economic populism. This is the ugly underbelly of the country. See, the thing What's he talking about specifically? And I'll this and I'll keep the hit on it. Um, I guess you got to finish it, but he was like, "How do we get past like certain issues?" And and, it's, and specifically dealing with white, like the white people. And it, to me, what I've gathered from it, I don't got to finish it, but what I was gathering from what he was saying was, we got to kind of look within, and then we, you know, and and, and 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 you know what? Let me preface this by saying I heard someone else say like. 
it's got to be tough for a white person to be told, and I and I agree with this, to, a white person to be told that you have a privilege when your life is hard, right? Because right. one, life is hard for every fucking body. And then to be like, what motherfucker? How the fuck is it? I, privilege? I just got arrested and I did this and da 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 Like, how the fuck do I have a privilege? And I can understand how that could be, like, it could, it could always make you re- be resentful. Like, fuck you. Like, you have no idea what the fuck. And I can see how that could cause some riffraff. And trust me, I, that's fair. That's a fair fucking point. Um, but the fact of the matter is, and I there's and me and this one guy talked about this on the last pod, and he his whole idea and it's very controversial, and I agree with it to agree, is that it, it is the problem. Is it maybe what if blacks are the problem? You know, and that's all you almost can't even say that kind of shit nowadays. But I'm you know me cares none. I'm gonna say it, and he and he said it, and he goes, he goes even like, can you? And this is like it's a touchy subject because I do believe that there is some there's some shit going on. Clearly, I've felt it, I've dealt with it, but sometimes there is like a, a, a almost like a a self loathing uh, victims mentality to what we've gone through as a people. Now I know personally, I don't like I live pretty solid. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But the truth is, like we have a 400 year behind start. So like, and so like the issues that we deal with as black people or as a whole, I'm speaking very general, well, you're going to have more issues because we started from so, you know, it's like, I don't know what's a good word to say it, but like things that you might be like, how could they do that? Or like, why is there so much killing and why is it, why do they do these things in their own neighborhood? It's like, well, it's like, because we, the motherfuckers are poor and and they, they're living like what poor, because if you go down South and any area that's poor is going to be shitty and they're going to do shitty, poor people shit. Right. (laughs) That's what I'm saying. Uh, And it just so happens that because the overwhelming majority of the country is white and I think it's the the ratios of poor versus, you know, because trust me, there's some poor ass everyone in this country. Mm hmm. Um, it, it just from what I don't know the math, but I, I would say out of the 13 percent of the black po- black population, a good percentage of them aren't very well off. And so I guess the point that I'm making, and I, I think I'm rambling now, but the point that I'm making is, is that when do we start as black people to to say, you know what? And I know I've been doing this for a while. And then when he said it and he was like, nah, you know, maybe it is us. When did we just stop saying, well, fuck it. Let's just go forward. Now, and I, I, again, there's going to be some things in the systemic issues that that makes it tough, and I get that. But there's also, it's like, well, did you also, there's a lot of opportunity now. I could mm-hmm. almost say this is going to be controversial. I might be privileged now in some in a lot of aspects because I am black, which might be fair. Right. You, you, listen, you, you brought a motherfucker in this country, and, you know, you, you, we built the motherfucker for the most part. You know, so I, I get it. And so, well, if you want us to get even, you're going to have to hook us up. So I get why that would be a thing. But maybe it's time for us to just, as as black people, like, you know what? I'm done even thinking that way. Like, why? It doesn't, I'm, you, are we going to get reparations or something? No? Well, then fuck it. Let's, 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 you know, let's keep going forward. So I don't know. I, I just think that we need to stop, uh, as black people, at least consider saying, fuck Let's let's get out of that mindset and let's and let's figure out ways to 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 go forward. Now it seems like we might need a hand in that, especially because the wealth and all that shit is specifically white people for the most part. Again, there's you know there's outliers. Have you looked into? And I don't even know why I'm bringing this up. Actually, I bring it up because you you tilted to the side, and I thought you put some on Facebook not too long ago, or you, you looked like Ice Cube. Yeah. Right. And I saw it a little bit there for a second. <laughs> oh yeah, I get that all the time. And then yeah. as you were talking about this, it made me think of Ice Cube and then his thing with Donald Trump. What's the whole? Do you know anything about the oh, platinum I know, plan? I know a lot. I don't know specifically about that, but I have an idea of what. And that's another thing about blacks. I don't get. I do not get about black people. He literally said, "I'm going to meet with both of these candidates." Right. And. Democrats, I know y'all think y'all getting our vote because that's kind of like a thing, and you know, and I, I want to go into that later. But our vote ain't just free. Don't think you're just gonna get the vote just because. And and listen, as a black man, that has been what my life has been. I did not vote this year, and let me tell you why. One, Biden was gonna win anyways. Always, always that way. Two, but you might say, well, there's other people you can vote for. Well, 
maybe this is on me. I didn't do my research for those other guys. And there's a lot of more other things you can vote for. Right. But they literally just put D and R. And then I bet you a lot of people are going in and just going D, 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 D. I don't believe in that. I don't. Or R, 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 You know what I'm saying? And and I don't believe in just voting something just because. Because at the end of the day, you know, just because what we think something means, we think blacks are for this, or we think Democrats are for blacks, or what we think that Republicans are not for black. I think that it's probably a little bit in the middle for both things. So I, I just don't believe. I, first of all, I think the whole voting process is ridiculous. You see, it's crazy. The people talking about civil wars and shit. It's crazy. Trump is like, oh, I'm not. You know, we won't recount. It's all bullshit to oh, me. It's all bullshit. And it's like they, it makes us feel. And it's, this has been a huge fucking. Every time you look, did you vote? Did you vote? Did you vote? I'm like, man. And I know some people are going to be like, man, you're part of the problem. And listen, I don't really bitch that hard, so whatever. I, I won't say <laughs> shit about it. Because really at that. the end of the day, my life, you know, has gotten better every fucking year. Even, mm-hmm. even, even with what I'm going through now, which and even, you know, it ain't the end of the world, but it's something. My life's still pretty good. Right. You know what I'm saying? And even that, think about, think about that. Talk about a, 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 a positive perspective. I just literally got diagnosed with some crazy shit, and it's, it's still not that bad. <laughs> and it's 2020 and I'm doing all right. You know what I'm saying? So maybe that's just I'm an optimistic, naive human being, whatever. But Well, I think what you're saying is important because, I mean, I think at the end of the day, it really just comes back to controlling the shit you can control of and you're in charge of your own happiness no matter, you know, what's going who's, on around you, who, who the fuck the president is. Yeah, right? like who gives a like? Listen, at the end, I, I guess there's some things, you know, like you know, healthcare. And so there's probably a couple of things that's probably a big deal and shit like that. But ultimately, what's going to happen is what's going to happen, and you just got to make it work, man. And I'm literally learning that. Even I already knew that, but I'm learning it even more right now, man. So I'm not going to let anything. And listen, is this maybe a cop out? I could have easily went. As a matter of fact, I even I registered. I'm like I might. Then I was like, you know what? Nah, I'm yeah. good. And I'm also not going to be super bitchy about it because I, I I understand people saying, well, if you didn't vote, you don't get a fucking. First of all, I can do what the fuck I want to do, so cares not. I know who the fuck's going to make me do anything, right? But second of all, but I understand, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, fuck it, you're right. Fuck, it. I don't, I don't care. But it's still just kind of interesting to talk to talk about. And I don't, and I'm pretty in the middle of of thoughts. Would you agree? Yeah. I, and I hate. You think that. you'll vote at some point? So you haven't voted before? No. Gotcha. So if you voted this year, that would have been the first time you voted. Yeah. Gotcha. And I and again, if I was going to vote, it probably would have been Biden because as much as and listen, this is gonna sound fucked up, but there's a lot of things about Trump that I do like, and the main thing is he's gonna do what the fuck he wants to do, mm-hmm. whether you like it or not. He's gonna say what he wants, do what he wants, and that's to me. He's he's like the ultimate cares none. Could you imagine if Trump came out and said cares none? <laughs> how fucking crazy that'd be! It actually, it, it, cares could, none. it could hurt the word. I don't know. <laughs> it, 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 I don't know. But my point is, who lives a more cares none life than him? Right. Him. Now again, you can use it for nefarious fucking issues, and you can be a piece of shit or whatever. I don't know. And and again, I don't. Again, we can talk about the media all day and. He can say one thing. You you can see you can watch the same debate, go on CNN, and then get this twist, and then go on Fox and get this twist. But you saw the same thing, and then you be like, "Wait a minute!" Right? It's very clear. You two motherfuckers got to, you know that's not what I heard on either side. You know, so I don't know, man. That's just you know life's a motherfucker right now, man. What about the? How about this? What about football? Let's switch it up. Football. Fuck those Bears, man. What's going on? Like what the? F- I don't know. Their offense is garbage. Garbage. I feel like it's worse almost. <laughs> it's like worse than garbage. And how did we were five and one at one point, which we could have been zero oh and six. <laughs> if you watched, if you saw any of those five wins, yeah. they could have lost easy. every one of those five games. Easy, easy. You know, I think uh, now we're just seeing what the, the, they had some lucky games. I think, and I just think this is the team that they are. You know, just a shitty fucking team. And, but the, I guess the defense is solid. Yeah, the defense is solid, but the fact is the offense can't hold the damn ball long enough to, to give the defense a damn break. break. So right, come right. come towards the end of the game, you know. It's like, what the fuck, you guys? Yeah, they're looking good for the first three quarters. and like, fuck, man. And they got their hands on their hips. They're tired, and now those field yeah, goals are turned into touchdowns. Right. And, and I'll tell you this, the Bears, uh, they, have, they, they got some, like, I, I don't think there's necessarily a good thing, magic with them. 
And I feel like we all, even when we have been good, I feel like we always win with like a, a weird, like, ooh, if it, a lot of our wins have felt lucky, even when we were good. This year, or you just mean, in yeah, just being a Bears fan? Being a Bears fan, I've been a Bears fan since about, oh, 2000. Like okay. A, like a strong one, you know? Yeah, yeah. And even when we were good, like the Hester years, like, Hester was like a big reason why, we, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. we had the best special teams, like, ever. Right. We had an awesome defense and really good special teams. And an offense was mediocre. Then that's all you needed. You just needed a, a serviceable offense just to not turn the ball over. And then when Grossman started turning the ball over a ton, then. Although I was a Grossman guy, I liked Grossman. I like Grossman too <laughs> and, until he became more bad, bad Rex than good Rex, quote unquote. I mean, he was the MVP candidate for like a little bit the one year. The, the year they went to the Super Bowl. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I was the like first I, the first eight games of the yeah, year. Yeah, he was playing his ass off. Yeah, putting up forties and fifties and shit. And then he got like I think he got hurt or something. And that was all she wrote. He was off off like he missed a game or two and then came back and then it was this good Rex bad Rex thing. You yeah, know where he, he would like he, throw four picks in a game, right? Like, multiple times. How yeah. do you feel about Cutler? I liked Cutler. Me too. He's an, he like I like his I like his like facial expressions are so like. Yeah. Cares none. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he cares none about nothing at all. Right. Uh, I, him and our old girl got a divorce. I heard. Uh, yeah. Kristen Cavalieri. Yes. I wonder what that was all about. I, Steve said that he read that he was unmotivated. She said he was unmotivated. I'm like, well, did you see the Jay Cutler? Like, <laughs> were you going on facial expressions? I he, thought he. Uh, I I thought that they moved to Tennessee. Didn't he start getting like a bunch of animals? Like he was like raising goats or some shit. Really? I didn't hear this. Or something. I thought like they got like a farm and he started taking care of animals and then he opened up a deli. Really? Like, I didn't hear Like a no. butcher shop. Did called, you watch the show? Was this on the show? Cutty's Cuts or something like no, that? No. Cutty's Cuts. Is something like that. And she, it, so to me, that's motivating. That's something, right? Uh, can you, how can we Google that? <laughs> I'm saying, uh, I mean, plus, like, I mean, like, what do you want him to do? As far as? I mean, the guy was a professional after X amount of years, right? He's got a shit, he's sitting on a shit ton of money. Like, why can't he just be on his farm and raise his goats and have someone run his his butcher shop? You know what? That you know, that's kind of that's a good segue I to mean, another topic because women like a motherfucker would drive, man. I, I've heard multiple women tell me that they would much rather it would be it would be more enticing. To he was get taking the, care of the kids. Like, it would be more enticing to be with the guy who was going for something and was motivated than the guy who already got it. And was no longer motivated. There's something that they like about a motherfucker who's just going to get it. Like they're going to get well, it. Well, maybe, maybe it's then maybe the motivation wasn't the work, and maybe, may, I don't know. Maybe there's some other lack of motivation. Like maybe he wasn't motivated. You know, is that what we're talking about? He wasn't putting that. Well, first of all, that's a big one. <laughs> if you ain't if you ain't holding it down in that department, then what's the they, point? They only going to put and I, you know, if. If you, it, it, it's funny how when you lay that pipe, you get a little leeway. You get a little leeway. You get a little leeway. You start racking up them brownie points. You got you to gotta put the work in. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. That's the motivation you're talking that's about. That's right. You put that work in. They say, all right, well, I can work with this. Let me, let me see. Uh, I, I also heard through my, uh, my Geneva Housewives gossip chatter that uh -oh. it was also because he was. You're talking about Jay? Yeah. He was unfaithful to Kristen with Kristen's best friend. And I don't want to, you know, I don't want to create too much shit, but I I heard that. <laughs> well, that's always tough. If you're going to cheat, don't cheat with the best friend. Right. Not the uh, best friend. With the best friend's bogus, too, though. Right. So just, she lost a husband and a best friend. I mean, if that's true. If like, that's what true. what do I know? I don't. I'm sorry, Jay. I'm not trying to yeah, spread, it, it, spread disinformation here. Uh, but I heard it. Yeah, cheat, like... The best friend? That's that's tough. That's tough. Girls are savage. They are. Girls, to me, Have listen. you ever had a situation like that? What, exactly? Uh, either you've been cheated on or some, some issue with a best friend. With a best friend? Like maybe you're, like a, one of your best friends did something with one of your girls. With like a girl that I was with? No. Yeah. No. no. But Or a girl that they were with? No. I've been in a situation where I've been with a girl who was with a, a friend of mine uh, in the past, and then I didn't say it right away. To the friend? To the friend. And then finally when that came out, he wasn't happy about that, but they weren't together. And, and we got over that shit instantly. Sure. 
and it's uh, just the initial shock and her and it's like ah you know what i really don't care yeah and, and i guess the problem was is in this specific situation this is a while ago but the specific situation was uh, maybe i was unaware based on the conversations i've had with the friend that like oh you care that much about that like uh, from from the conversation you and i have had about her that you didn't care like zero percent right like nothing as a matter of fact you cared less than as a matter of fact you encouraged behaviors <laughs> but and I understand his philosophy. He's like, well, he could have told me. And it's like, okay. And I admitted wrong in that situation. Right. So, you know. He wasn't I, even I, saying he had to ask me. He just, just told me. Right, right. In that situation. And and, and, not, and not that that friend is, is fucking, like, he ain't never done nothing either. So, listen, I, and I, I admitted that. I probably should have said something, especially for the reasons that I did not. But with that being said, not for, like, an actual, like, his girl. No. Yeah. To me, that's, that's worse. Dirty pool. And if anything, uh, I would be letting. And if and if it did happen, if it was like the best friend, I think that I would have enough discipline not to. But if it did, they would have to know right away. And I know that probably be really vicious. But I'm like, do your girls out here? I I don't think that I could. But if it did happen, I would have to, especially if it's one of the you know the crew, the day one. Right, you know? right. It's one thing if you're some dude that I don't really know. I worked, you know, maybe like that, like whatever, all, all day. Yeah. But like a like one of the homies, no, no. bro, code's a motherfucker for me, especially. Oh yeah. Like like so, Steve. Well, and especially as you get older in life, and you you know you you value that stuff, I think more and more and more. And I'm not saying you specifically, but I think people in general. Well, first of all, I just don't value vagina like that. Okay. I really don't. I don't. I don't. I don't value vagina over my integrity. Period. I know a lot of guys just don't agree with that. Like that's why I don't lie to women. Period. Mm-hmm. You know, you ask me a question, you're gonna get the answer. And and, and, and whether you like it or not. And 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 I and the and the paradox is is that actually they like you more, <laughs> even if they hear some shit that they don't want to hear. But they almost it's like they trust you. You know, like and that's what and I've been haven't talked about this in a while. It's been you know, haven't had a podcast in forever, but. Uh, just the brutal honesty thing is it's like been the best thing in my life it's been the, probably the number one thing that i've come to this realization of the, like what's the most important thing is this brutal honesty and i learned it first i would say as far as the the depths of what it means to me through being honest to women but definitely just being honest to and most importantly yourself mhm you know, it's like honestly, the and it's hard. It's sometimes you don't want to hurt a motherfucker's feelings. You know, you don't you don't want to you don't want to hurt yourself. You're like, man, because if you dig like digging in deep, that's hard, man. And I, and I work on that shit. You know, I try to dive in because a lot of times it be my shit. <laughs> so and that's just being honest, you know. So uh, I don't know. I'm super. I just don't value vagina like that. Now, don't get me wrong. That doesn't mean I don't like vagina. That's not what I mean. What I mean is I'm not gonna lose integrity. And here's the reason why, over vagina. And here's the reason why. Because <laughs> there's more than one vagina. There's plenty of, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you don't like the Chris as I am, well, I'm not going to switch it. Because what, what do most guys do? They'll switch it up because they still want to fuck. Right. Right? And listen, and I'm not saying I haven't done that. I've definitely done that plenty of times. <laughs> and not even, like, within the last few years, I've definitely been that way. But what I have learned, again, is that when you... If you don't have that philosophy, that you're like, oh, I'm, I, and, and, and listen, there'll be situations where you're not going to fuck that chick then because, yep, and that's her call. And then, but you have to be willing to walk away mm-hmm. and say, you know what? Hey, I'm just, I'm not fucking this one because she wasn't. And I'm telling you, any, any guys listening that are having issues with women, that's one of the first things to gather. Be able to walk away when you feel your integrity is being jeopardized. Like, I know a lot, of, like, I think I've told the story, maybe not, but I'll tell it again. Cares none. I'm not going to say the person's name. I know it. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, they said, the, the guy before they were dating me said, uh, the hair, did I tell you the haircut situation? The haircut? Yeah. No. So the guy was like, he, he, he got a haircut. And then the girl was like, well, I don't like your haircut. And the guy was like, well, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, what do you want me to get? I'll, ch- I'll change it. And she's like, well, I'm just saying I don't like it. And he, and he was like, well, just tell me what, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. I'll, I'll, I'll change it right now. I'll fucking go change it. And she was like, no, nah, you know, whatever. I'm just saying I don't like it. And she goes, but the reason, and she told me this story. She goes, the reason why I like you, Chris, and this is before I even knew what I knew, but this is the old me, not right. the new me is even more vicious. But back then, I was, and this is like the beginning stages of me being honest, I was like, she goes, well, I, I had this weird thing on my chin. I was, it was growing, just it looked like a bozo or some shit. It was, <laughs> it was just like the, what would you call that part? 
the chin. Yeah, but like just a beat, like a goatee, but without just, the without the T, just to go. Just to this part, it was hideous. <laughs> now looking back, it was hideous. But she goes, I don't like that. You know, you should get rid of that. And I'm like, she. <laughs> I'm like, you better like it, man. <laughs> And then, uh, and she didn't like it, but she admitted, she goes, I'm not gonna lie to you, like, you standing in, in tall in that moment made you more attractive. So even though if I didn't like it, I, I just like that you owned it. Right. And, uh, and, and I can see how a lot of guys will say, well, you know, it's, it's not worth the fight, no love, I don't want to lose her. It's like, oh, so maybe, some, maybe the way to, to make the girl happy is be willing to lose her. Right, because I I would feel like if she's they, want to lose you over a haircut, man, and get the fuck out of there. Right, anyway. get out of there. <laughs> but what happens is, is maybe because it's lack of options. Maybe it's because I don't know. Or maybe in most 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 likely, it's a, a, a insecurity. It's like insecurity and comfort. We have a guy that we used to work with, uh, that works at another bar down the street, or did work down. You know who I'm talking about? Got married or tried to get married, whatever. We had a buddy who was in the bar. Uh, I'm not gonna I can't, put it, I'm I not can't gonna think this of this motherfucker uh, Just think of how many dudes That Anyways He was a manager Uh huh Is a bartender Manager Yeah Hispanic kid Got it There you go uh, And he taught he, Valuable lesson He was like um, He was like He's going through issues With his girl And he's And I'm like Well then you know Fuck the bitch You know who gives a fuck You know da, da, da. He goes well I don't know if I'll ever Find another one and I'm like, oh, no, brother, you are lost. I'm like, well, first of all, just like logically speaking, there's other women. Right. So like he was like, I can't find another girl. It wasn't even like this specific one. It was like, I'm like, that's crazy. It's literally crazy. There's seven girls right here you can talk to. You don't know that. You know? And then he was like, oh, I'm like, bro, you just don't know your worth, your value. And I, I know he and, does beat himself up though a little bit, man. Yeah, I mean, first, there's a lot of great qualities about you, and and if you just embraced it, then don't don't get me wrong, because that could it could get weird. Because I have been called conceited and cocky before, but I don't think that I'm conceited or cocky. I think I'm just extremely, extremely fucking confident. But I don't think that I'm better. I just think that I'm dope. Right. Literally, the, the cares none. That's the podcast. Cares none be dope. And so it can get skewed, and, and if you if you get s- lost track of you know I, i'm the shit and i'm better than it's like no nah, i'm not better than nobody but i'm dope and i know my worth mm-hmm. and i'd be damned if i allow the fact that just because you might have some good pussy that i'm gonna just cower and let you can dictate my life right. <laughs> especially in this life so short now again maybe it might be different you have the compromise and wives and i get you know there might be some but at the end of the day i'm not going to dictate who i am and i and, and i really believe that women like that. It, maybe not. Maybe generally speaking, you know. But I, from what I gathered. Yeah. No, I think you're right. You know, I'm not. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. So, like again, more advice for the fellas. And I've, I'm sure I've said this before, but it's feel like it's been so long. Know your worth. Figure it out. You know, and and the and the best way to get worth, to, in my opinion, is to work on yourself. So even if you're overweight, right? But you know that you're putting the work in and you're calorie counting and then you're eating better shit and you're working out. And then someone goes, well, you're still fat. But you're like, well, first of all, motherfucker, I'm going after my shit. What the fuck? Is, what are your problems? And then are you fixing those? Yeah, what are you doing about them? And, and I would argue a lot of people aren't doing a lot of shit about their issues. So that's where I get my confidence from. I'm working on all my shit. So whether it's good or bad, I'm working on it. Right. It's a little bit better than it was yesterday. So that's literally where I get like all of my confidence from. Fuck you. And I just know that most people aren't, you know, and and I also just know what I, and I don't know. So I, that's kind of where I go with that whole thing. But I'll be damned if I let a woman dictate my life because she's got good vagina. First of all, I don't give a fuck how dope you are. You're not going to, you know, if anything, we'll do this together. Right. We'll, 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 we'll build an empire together, but I'll be damned if I'll let you pick out my clothes. Like, I, I did something. <laughs> Would you do that? Do you? No. Did people do that? Oh, man, my wife got to pick out my clothes. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, <laughs> no. I mean, if we're going out somewhere, sometimes I'll say, do you like this shirt with this uh, That's different. Like that, that's right. an opinion. That's different. Not yeah, like, I need I'm, you to put it out. Right. I need you to put my clothes out. Like, that's absurd. Sure, I wish I would. Yeah, no thanks. Wish I would, man. But uh, anything else, man? Anything else on your mind? Uh, nothing much on my mind, man. I'm starting potty training with my kid. What? That's been a shit show. 
<laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. Yeah. What's yeah, what's that like? Uh it's been it's been he's you know what, he's young, first of all. I mean he, he's gonna be two next week. Um so two, I guess, is already like a younger age to start potty training. Okay. Um and then I guess boys are harder to potty train than girls. Is there a reason? I don't know. I don't have I've never potty trained a girl and I don't I mean it's not like I'm teaching them. Like we're not like we're not we're not up to like write your name in the snow level yet okay, or anything okay. you know it's just like just sit down and just go you know okay um but yeah man it's it's been a trip like for the first like four days or so my wife uh, was home from work and we just had him running around just bare assed you know all day so no diaper he was afraid to take he was afraid to crap he wouldn't crap but like he would like just be standing there and just start peeing and then after a couple of days and he'd like mommy daddy got to go to the potty and he'd take okay, us and so go to the he's getting, he's it. getting it um and uh he started using the the toilet to to shit and i gotta say man the kid could shit like a bear oh it's, it's good dumps huh dude for a little i mean he's tiny he's you know he's, yeah. he's a two-year-old but the, the the two dumps that he's taken are probably as long as his arm so just monsters monster dumps monster dumps for this little kid and they weren't that big in his in his diaper which is weird but the worst is is when he actually does decide to not let us know when he needs to shit and he just shits in in his in his pants or in his oh. crib. But that's that's and, the, and, there's, and there's no diaper, right? And there's no diaper. So it's, it's just, just a shit. little bit more mess, but that's how you train. But that's yeah, cuz then they learn like, "Oh, I don't like I don't like this feeling." So that's the shit that I'm dealing with. But outside of that, man, <laughs> I see what you did there. Yeah. <laughs> and then work kind of sucks, right? You know, cuz everything's yeah. closed up again and it's probably gonna get worse. I, I, I mean, it's just only gonna get worse, right? Yeah, I don't know. Unless I, the election yeah. stops it because they're no longer using it for political reasons. Crazy. Did you see that on the news on uh, the election day? Like oh. the CDC came out and said, if you have COVID symptoms, or even if you have COVID, you can still go out and vote. <laughs> Just let the person know there, like as you're going to re- as you're signing in to vote or whatever, that you have COVID, so then they know to wipe down your station. So all year long, man, like don't you know, quarantine, 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 six well, feet apart. Well, I, I, I think that. I have I, I I have a theory for that is because at least in the beginning, again, I still also think that's political, so I'm not I'm just just a devil's advocate. Sure, and in the beginning, they did not know the severity of the situation so that's why it was hardcore in the beginning they do know now that although this shit is extremely contagious clearly but it's not necessarily as deadly you know because even though the cases are going up uh, if i'm not mistaken deaths are either staying the same or going down right but the cases are going up well, you know so and the shit, the shit is like you kept like i caught it my caught like you they, they i've heard that we're all going to catch it just like we all caught the flu at one point you know it's just a matter of time, uh, but it's but it's you'd be a damn fool if you don't think this has been at least to some degree politi- politicized. Oh, totally, like for sure. But I also think it's serious too, man. I mean, there's there's a, there's a chance, and doctor thought that the COVID might have caused the shit in me. How crazy is that? And it's, that's not proven, but like it could have been, right? So like they don't know enough about they don't the know, disease you know, itself, and like, then we if- don't know what in ten years we don't know. What if it's some shit that it's a 10-year thing? You get your first little thing 10 years. We don't know. And then 10 years later, your dick falls off. I mean, I know it's a joke, but what if that's a <laughs> thing, you know? you know, Or you grow a dick. Like, if you're a girl, you're growing a dick. <laughs> My point is, is like, okay, uh, I, I have I, I have a respect for it. Um, I do what I'm supposed to do. You know, I mask up and I do all those supposed things. But I do things like, man, you know, you got to still... I keep hearing this. You, the, 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 the remedy can't be worse than the, the thing or... Uh, How's it go? The cure can't be worse than the disease. Yeah, something like that. I'm like, yeah, that's a good point, you know. Uh, but if it, it, but if it's as vicious as they say, then it should don't. It's it's about to get worse, you know. And well, because we're headed into that that, that time. season, right? You know, right. And that's probably why your season seeing uh, cases spike to a degree. And I, this, like, and first of all, in, in this weather, people are gonna be outside again. I get it, man. I don't know, man. It's uh. This year can't end quick enough, huh? No, man, I can't. Oh, th- uh, there's some shit too. Did you hear that? Uh, <laughs> confirmed scientists have f- officially heard radio signals from the galaxy. Official. 
What like what kind of radio? Like just like kind of beeps and blips and stuff. I don't stuff? know exactly what it, it it read something along the lines of I I feel like I saw something like that they did receive or some kind of sporadic radio bursts or something. But it wasn't like Oh, you know, and, oh, and also confirmed water on the moon. I did see that. And not to don't forget what happened a little bit ago. They we have in custody vehicles not made of this earth. That's a fact. Oh, I did not hear that what? confirmation. That's a big one. This is like right, like right in the middle. They like threw, <laughs> they what? they threw it in there during the George Floyd situation, and it was just like yeah, low key. Oh yeah, by the way, we do have vehicles confirmed by the Pentagon. Everybody have a good night. Yeah, this, yeah just throw it in there. Like it's like there. Come on, there's something going on. There's something going on. There's got to be something there's going on. Something going on. Yeah, it was uh uh. You have, uh, we have UFO, we have, uh, it was out, otherworldly, outworldly technology, vehicles or... not made of this earth was the, was the thing, something like that. How the hell did that get From lost? From the Pentagon. And then, so then, then, then you find out that there's water on the moon. That was what, a couple weeks ago. And then this yeah. new shit, this radio burst shit. So I have a feeling. It is. So I gotta look. Okay, so I gotta look back at the vehicle thing, and I gotta look at the radio burst shit because I I thought I heard a while ago about radio burst, but I guess it just depends on what type of radio. Like, are they playing like country FM or some shit? Back oh, yeah, that'd be funny. You get some Tupac, <laughs> right? Right. Um, I definitely. You you believe there's something going on? Like, you think we're not the only ones, right? Oh yeah, no, no. I definitely. Yeah, and no, I think it would be asinine to just assume that we're the. Out of the tr- 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 quin- billion, right. trillion, trillion. That we're the most intelligent life forms. <laughs> Clearly, that's not the case. Or the fact that we, like, or we might be the only life forms in, like, in all of the universe. Right. The Milky it, Way itself is ridiculously big and stupid. Yeah, no, that's I, I, improbable and impossible. And then the, the universe, and this it, just the observable universe. I, I'm First of all, that could be a whole nother podcast, and we actually get some good time right now, but... Well, I can get into space. That's my shit. That's my jam. And it's so vast. If you ever see, you ever see these videos where they show you like a pin or they show you a dot of like the, the smallest thing on the earth. It's like a neutron or something, whatever it is, whatever the plank. I think, I think the measurement's called a plank. I have the no smallest idea. measurement. Uh huh. I believe it's called a plank. And it's like, so it, it's like smaller than nothing. Can't even see it with your you eye. You can't even see it with your eye. And then they just keep doing bigger and bigger things until you get to like the Earth, and you're like, "Oh shit, that's so much bigger than that plank." And then you get to the moon or the sun, which is so much bigger than Earth. And you get to the next biggest sun, and then and then it's like, and it just keeps getting more and more vicious. And then you think about how big the sun is, right? It's probably ridiculous, right? And there's things that are like 700 billion times bigger than our sun, and then there's like. A trillion, billion, trillion, killion of those. It's like, whoa, the universe is stupidly big. <laughs> it's like you can't even fathom how big it is. Right. And then we're the only ones. Not possible. And there's religions that say, like, uh, that's the part that gets me. It's like, mm, mm, you're telling me the religion, you're telling me that, the, like, Christianity, we're the only ones. Right. We're the only ones. How come God didn't write about the other aliens yeah, in the you universe? Just, you just all these damn dots in there. That's it. And then I don't, I don't I can get to space all day, but yeah, we're at uh, wait a minute, thirty seven, man. Let's 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 call nice. it. All right, all right. Um, so first of all, thank you. Is, can we hopefully everything's good now? We can get this a little bit more going. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah, just you know, every couple of weeks is good. I get D Eric on here. Um, gotta figure out that three way mic situation. You know what? I've had a lot, a few things going on. Hey, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I guess. I, I'm joking. I, I'm joking. I'm joking. I, 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 I just totally <laughs> fucking around with that. Uh, I got to figure that shit out, but, uh, and as always, cares not, <clears throat> nigga. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah.